All right, today we are going to be taking a look at Ferran OS. Um, now this distribution is relatively new in the Linux scene, and I gotta tell you, it's pretty damn good. Um, now this distro aims to have a pretty good out of the box experience, and I gotta tell you, it does quite a good job. Um, you can see up here, you know, you got relatively nice wallpaper, looks really nice out of the box. Um, needless to say, Ferran did a good job of the theming. Now, the biggest selling point to Ferran is obviously the themer, so we're going to take a look at that right now. And, I gotta tell you, this is pretty damn good. Um, now when I first installed this, it prompted me to, uh, you know install uh, the proprietary icons for the Windows themes and I did that and you, know, you got your proprietary icons you know so it kind of looks very similar to Windows um, just, just give a Windows you know you got your uh, Windows 10, 8, 7 which by the way I think this is probably one of the first distros to have a uh, Windows 10 theme which is quite good and you got your Vista, your um, XP and your 2000 and below. So you know you can make it look like 3.1 if you want. If you want funny looks, you can have it look like 2000. You can walk around and you know have people ask why you run an old version of Windows. <laughs> got your Apple themes, so you know your Sierra newer, <clears throat> and your Mavericks older, and you got some uh, Linux themes as well. <clears throat> You've also got your Linux Mint themes, which being that this distribution is based off Linux Mint, if you want a pretty standard Linux Mint experience, just like these, you've also got Chrome OS themes, which Chrome OS looking very nice. <clears throat> if you want a sort of Google esque theme, that's quite good. And let's just uh, pick one out. Probably the main one that people are going to be interested, probably the Windows XP theme. So let's go ahead and click that. And as you can see, looks very much like XP. In fact, very much like XP, in fact. So much so that if you set your wallpaper to the default uh, Windows XP one, people, you know, to the naked eye, you would not be able to tell the difference, most likely. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, you know, you also get fairly nice selection of wallpapers. Let's see if we can find an XP-esque one. <coughs> God. No, sorry. Uh, this looks close enough. You know you got quite an XP look going on here. It's quite nice. Um, let's have a look at some Windows 7 themes. Now the basic, now that looks perfect obviously. Uh, however with the arrow and that obviously you're not going to get it 100%. But as you can see, once you click that, it'll just load it up. It also, for some of the themes, changes the tile layout and that sort of thing. Not quite sure why we've got Mac cursor all of a sudden, but that's fair enough. And as you can see, since I installed the uh, proprietary icon themes, we have you know, the box and Windows 7 icon themes. It does look very much like Windows 7. Um, let's just check out the arrow themes quickly. As you can see, it's not quite a hundred percent, but it's the closest I've seen a Linux distribution come to the uh, whole Aero look. Yeah, it does look pretty good. Um, there we go, Windows 10 themes. We'll have a look at Windows 8 themes first. As you can see, it's very Windows 8 Um, yeah. Uh, obviously, let's have a look at the Windows 10 theme as well. Because I think this may well be the closest to the actual desktop in terms of what it usually looks like. The problem is though, at the moment in Linux there really isn't a uh, start menu that looks anything like uh, Windows 10. So you're stuck with the slightly Windows 7-esque one. But as you can see, when you got it like this, virtually indistinguishable from Windows 10. It's very good. Um, now this theme does sometimes have stability issues and you know it's kind of annoying but okay. Oh also there's a tablet mode. 
which, got to be honest with you, I'm not really sure how many people are going to be running this on a tablet, uh, on account of the fact that tablets are even capable of doing this, aren't quite uh, massively common. As you can see though, yeah, it's, you'd be alright running this on a tablet. Um, Apple themes, these are quite interesting. Let's go with Sierra or newer. Uh, might take a while to blow this one up. Um, but as you can see, move the whole panel to the top, which is quite cool. Um, and like I say, may take a while to do this because it's obviously quite a big theme change. But eventually, yeah, apparently, I might need to restart the computer because uh, for some of these themes, you sometimes do. But also, I believe that may be the slingshot menu. At any rate, it looks very much like what's used in the uh, elementary OS. But as you can see, it looks very much well like a Mac, if you want to say that. You know, you your um, Apple logo down there. You know, it's pretty good. Now, me personally, I would have had that over here, but you know, to have it more Mac at. At least I think that's where it is on the Mac. No, I believe it's more like, uh, yeah, something like that. But um, not quite sure what happened. Why there's no like you know little face icon for the Finder. But fair enough. You know, it, it does look like a Mac, and if you're more into the Mac layout of things, this could be a very good distribution to take a look at. You know, because if you feel like Windows one day, you can switch it up. If you feel like an Apple another, you can switch that up. You know, the out-of-the-box customization options are more or less limited. But I think we should probably just go with the old saying, uh, Linux Mint desktop. More fun, that kind of look. But for the new user that has no idea how to do any of this themselves, and that installs this, infinite customization options make it look like whatever they want out of the box. And that, that is brilliant. Um, this is probably I would have no trouble recommending dis this distribution for that fact alone. I'm not quite sure what happened to the panel layout there, but fair enough. And I think we might have found a first issue. Um, or well, possibly it's deliberate. There's no problem there, so I suppose. You know, but I say next we have a look at what kind of software they bundled. Now we've seen the main Ferrin feature. Um. You got your accessories, it's, it's all standard stuff. Um, varieties, that's quite nice. Um, and your games, you've got Steam and Play on Linux. Now, Wine and Play on Linux, that is a good thing to bundle for a distribution for new users because obviously they will try to download Windows programs off the internet, and you know, if they don't work, well, you might have them switching back to Windows, so good option to include that. You got your Steam. Now, I will never understand why distributions bundle Steam, because not everyone that has a PC is interested in gaming. Um, but other distributions do it, so fair enough. It just seems like a bit of a bizarre thing to me. In your photo, you've got your um, Critter, which is kind of like paint, which is another good inclusion. No idea why lots of distributions don't include a paint style program. Um, and the rest is just all kind of standard stuff. For internet, you got your uh, Geary for email. I'm not quite sure how many people use email clients, but you know it's a good inclusion. I use them, so it's, it's quite good. Your uh, IRC client, fair enough. You know, your Steam once again, transmission, great inclusion. Now, weirdly enough, this distribution comes bundled with Vivaldi. Not quite sure why you would do that, um, being that Vivaldi is quite new and. You know, some people don't know the way around it, but there is a um, web browser manager which I believe comes from Sorin. So, you know, if you want to switch out Vivaldi with something else, you can do. Yeah, not really fond of the layout of Vivaldi, to be honest. Not really uh, my sort of thing, but, you know, it, it's there if you want to use it. You can switch it out very easily if you want to. Um, in the office, you've got your double UPS. Thank you brilliant inclusion WPS is, is it is better than LibreOffice in a sense in that it is much more compatible with Microsoft Office documents which is what most other people will be using so it's kind of quite an important thing 
Uh, also, it looks kind of Microsoft Office esque, so you know, you can bring people over by having a free Office suite as a selling point. That's, that's pretty good. Got your uh, friends, fair enough. Some programming stuff. Uh, not really sure if that's a worthwhile inclusion, since I get the feeling that um, most people that would want that kind of thing would obviously know how to install it themselves, but fair enough. Sound and video, you got VLC, great choice. G radio, you can listen to your internet stations. Once again, great choice. Um, Banshee and Bracero, once again, nothing wrong with that choice. Um, obviously, you're whining again down here. Your administration, it's all standard stuff. Now, I believe that is the Linux Mint software center, but I may be wrong. Note that is the GNOME software center. Uh, once again, quite a good choice. Me personally, I'd have gone with the Linux Mint software center, but you know, it is what it is. Um, you got Synaptic as well for a slightly more advanced uh, package manager. Um, you know, you got some interesting stuff in the preferences as well. Interestingly enough, you have a video wallpaper program. You can set any video you want as your wallpaper, effectively. Now, I most likely can't show you this in a virtual machine because it will probably crash it, but you know, you can set an AVI or something like that as your wallpaper. So, you know, it's pretty cool, you know, if you use it on your Android phone, you've got it here as well. All good stuff here. And that's probably about it, more or less. Looked at Ferrin's main feature slightly. Uh, also, they have a dark mode, which is pretty cool. Um, see if we've missed anything. No, not really. Interestingly enough, they do come with some uh, new mix you know, popular Linux themes as well if you're a seasoned Linux user, but that's probably all we missed. Um, some of the rods and ends, they have a conky over here for the time, which looks very nice with the default wallpaper. Dorin does, um, no, Ferrin rather, does come with some nice wallpapers. And that's about it, really. I would absolutely, absolutely recommend this distribution. You must try it out. It's brilliant. Relatively new distribution, not popular enough. It's great. Um, everything is here. You have basically every theming option you'd ever want. If, you know, you can even go with the standard mint themes if you really wanted to. Fantastic selection of software. Everything that you would ever need is there. It is just a brilliant distribution. Looks great. Relatively stable because you're on a mint base. You know, and I guess that's kind of just the conclusion, really. This is kind of a first in Linux for being just so customizable out of the box. And obviously, you can customize it yourself, you know, with your own icon themes and that, if that's your sort of thing. The out of the box experience here is just great. That's just kind of the point I'm trying to make here. Just give it a go, that's it. Well, thanks for watching. Please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.